Hello and welcome back to the channel everybody. I am your host Vortex from MobileMusicPro.com, your home for mobile music production. And if you are new to the channel, what we do here is release weekly videos teaching people how to produce music on their iOS device. And in today's video, we're going to be going through our entire app collection to see which ones we actually use and why, right after this. And remember folks, if you do enjoy this content, please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Now it's probably no surprise, but for this channel, I do have to go through a bunch of different music apps all the time. And real quick, just so you guys know, I do end up buying almost every single one of my apps, even though we do give away a ton of different app codes here on the channel. But really, even if I didn't have this channel, I'd probably still be buying this mini apps, just because like you, I'm super curious about what these new apps can do when they come out. Because in general, I'm always looking to improve my workflow or find new sounds, and sometimes this can actually prevent me from making as much music as I could. And so I thought it might be a good idea to just go through every single app I have and actually tell you guys which ones I use on a regular basis. And also stick around to the end of the video to find out how you can save 50% off our brand new classic rock sample pack. Alright, and now with that intro aside, let's hop right into our iPad and start going through all of these different music apps. Now, of course, this is just our app collection, so definitely make sure to let us know which apps you use the most out of your app collection in the comments below. And if you did have any questions about any of the apps that we mentioned in today's video, definitely feel free to leave those in a comment below as well. All right, now let's first get started by talking about our app dock at the bottom of the screen. But starting from the left, I just have my standard productivity apps here, as you can see from my Gmail, my Google Chrome browser, and my settings icon. And I end up mostly using this to shut down my iPad these days. Since there's no button, I just tap on that and then tap on shutdown. I do miss that button though, but Apple decided to kill that. But then next up we have the App Store, which I often frequent to check out new apps and check out their new versions. And then my Google Docs, which is where I store a lot of my information for the channel. And then next up are a few different files apps, but we'll get into those in just a second. So let's skip those for now and head on over to the final three icons, which is going to be my Photos app, which I mostly use on this iPad just for taking screenshots. And then our DAWs of choice over here, which is Cubasis 2 and Cubasis 3. All right, now that we've finished talking about the other apps here on the dock, I want to focus in on these three file apps here. And that's going to be the Native Files app from Apple. And then Sample Crate by Alex Buga. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing your last name. And then finally, we have Audio Share here by Jonathan. And I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name. So first up, let's take a look at the Files app. Now, what I use this app for is a traditional Windows Explorer on the PC or a traditional Finder on the Mac. And this is where I actually go to copy and paste files. So for example, if I'm copying presets inside of an app like Audio Layer, or if I'm going to my server where I store all of my files and all of my samples, so again, much more of a traditional files use for this files app. But then if we move on to the sample crate app, there's a little bit of a different use case for this. So what I use this app for is specifically browsing audio files and samples. And one of the main reasons why is because you can quickly audition each file with a single tap. Whereas in the native files app from Apple, you actually have to go to a second screen in order to audition a file and then go back to your original screen to continue browsing the rest of the files. So that of course can become extremely frustrating when you're trying to audition many sample files one after the other. And then finally, we have Audio Share, which I use for a completely different use case as well. We'll tap on that here. Now, I used to use this app a lot more on my previous iPad, but since that Files app did come out and allow me to connect directly to my server, I typically don't keep as many files organized on my iPad inside of Audio Share anymore. However, if I do have to go somewhere and want to bring some samples or want to bring some project files, I definitely would prefer to store those inside of Audio Share. And actually, Audio Share does have a couple of quick tools that you can use by just tapping on an audio file and then tapping on Tools. You can do things like normalize, trim and fade, convert, or send this to audio copy to paste inside of another app. So again, super handy for organizing your files, but I don't quite use it as much as I used to. All right, now with the doc and file apps out of the way, let's go ahead and start digging into these folders. What I've done is organize all of my apps into specific folders that roughly describe what these apps do. So starting from the top left and moving right, we first have my DAW and chords, then my groove machines and drums, and then loops and samples, then samplers, synths, and instruments and guitar amps. That's the first row there. Then the second row is going to be generative apps. And then a folder with probably the most apps inside of it there, which is going to be the delay, reverb, chorus, gate, pitch shifters, wideners, and so forth. So the vast majority, the bulk of my effects. And then after that, I have my multi effects folder. And then one of my personal favorite folders here, distortion and tape, and then audio utilities and MIDI plugins. And then the last and final row here is going to be vocal plugins, and then compressors and limiters and then EQs, exciters, and mastering. So that was all of the folders that all of my apps have been organized into, and I don't really think I need to organize it any more detail than that. 
All right, now the next thing I wanna do is go through each and every one of these individual folders here. But of course, we don't have the time or scope to go through every single app individually. But for the vast majority, I'm just gonna say a quick piece about some of these apps that stand out. And again, the whole reason for this video is to point out exactly which apps I actually use as opposed to just collect. So first up, let's go ahead and dive into the DAW and Chords folder. Now here I have the standard DAWs and iOS such as Beatmaker 3, Zen Beats, and Aurea. And that's just so I can test things. I don't actually produce too much music in these. But then I have my chord generators here, which I love, love, love. They're great for finding inspiration or just really learning about music theory. Although I don't know why my Nano Studio 2 is all the way here at the bottom. They should be right here next to the rest of the DAWs. There we go. But yeah, that is pretty much it here for DAWs and chords. Each one of these apps is fantastic. But the ones I probably use the most here are going to be Odyssey and Tonality. Odyssey is great for generating different chords and different drum beats and such. And then Tonality is great for coming up with chord progressions inside of your DAW. All right, now let's take a look at the next folder, which is going to be Groove Machines and Drums. Now inside of these apps here, you'll just find a ton of different amazing sounds. Of course, BeatHawk has a ton of great sounds, Gadget 2, iMachine, and Groovebox. Just cannot recommend these apps enough for their high quality sounds. And of course, we have all the standard drum apps like Digistix 2 and FAC Drum Kit, EG Pulse, Koala, and so forth. And one of the main reasons I have a lot of these apps too, is so that we can put our sample pack files inside of them and create presets for you. And every single one of our sample packs has a bunch of presets that support all of these apps and more. But as far as which ones I use, I definitely use BeatHawk for sounds. It really depends on the genre of music that I'm making, but definitely use Gadget for any type of electronic music. I find myself using Groovebox a lot lately too, because they have a lot of great drum patterns in there, and you can just simply export the MIDI. And then I use Digistix 2 here all the time as my main drum machine inside of Cubasis 3 as an AUV3 audio unit, since of course Cubasis doesn't come with the best sampler in the world. But there's also some amazing drum synths in here as well, like Synth Drum AU and Elastic Drums. Really fantastic apps for doing sound design and creating your own drums. But we don't want to spend too much time on here, so let's move on to the next folder, which is going to be Loops and Samples. Now again, it all depends on the type of genre that I'm making, but typically for rock-related tracks, I definitely like to use Rock Drum, X Drummer, and Drum Session. And then I love to use Soft Drummer for more softer ambient style tracks. But for electronic music, you can't go wrong with Launchpad and Bloxway for sure. Let's move on to the next folder here. And that's going to be samplers. Now in here, I love, love, love using both Segments and Koala for chopping samples. And what's fantastic is that they're both AUV3, so they work inside of your DAW. And it's funny, as new apps come out, I start to use those a little bit more than the older apps. So for example, I used to use Audio Layer a lot more before Segments came out. And then after Segments came out, now I find myself using Koala a little bit more for chopping. But they all work fantastic. And lately, I've been using Bleece Sample Wiz 2 for all of my one-shots. Just a fantastic app for using one shots and customizing those and making really great sounds. And of course, like most apps these days, it comes with a ton of amazing presets as well. Now, next up is probably everybody's favorite category, and that is synths or synthesizers. Now, here I have a little bit more apps in these folders than I do typically, and that's because I just love all of these synthesizers so much. As far as which ones I use, again, it depends on the genre, but for 80s type of stuff, you just can't go wrong with the M1 and the Syntronic, they got all the emulations of all of the fantastic, legendary, historic synthesizers. And then for more modern stuff, I just love Synthmaster. You really can't go wrong with Synthmaster 2 or 1 or just the player. Now, I definitely use Pure Synth a lot because since Sample Tank is not AUV3, Pure Synth is pretty much my Sample Tank replacement because they have so many sounds in there, such as electric guitars, acoustic guitars, flutes and choirs, and just pretty much any sound that you need. Now, if you're making more heavy metal stuff, I can't recommend Poison 202 enough. Such a fantastic app for creating super deep and dark sounds. Really great for things like cyberpunk and metal, and pretty much just anything that rocks. Same with Casper and Cauldron. Just really, really great distorted sounds in there. And since I put all my Basilicious 2 sounds inside of Pure Synth, I don't really use the Basilicious 2 app by itself very much anymore. But yeah, of course, everybody knows the Model 15 and the Model D. And of course, you have Jacob Hack's app, which is the Agonizer app that he did with Kai, aka Numerical Audio, and just one of the greatest bass apps that I have. One of the greatest bass synths I've ever seen. Beautiful user interface, easy to use, and just super dirty, grimy, thick sounds. And you can't go wrong with any of the Jim Audio apps here, like Pure Acid, just fantastic for any type of electronic music. And again, all of these apps that I have here are just awesome. I mean, if I do have them and they're not deleted, you can bet that I really, really like something about them. Something about them stands out and makes them special. For example, this Bass 808 app from Audio Kit. Just a great Bass 808 app if I don't feel like using samples that day and just want to throw on an 808. It just comes in really, really handy. And oh man, this Waverly XL app. Oh, just beautiful, beautiful sounds. Just great soundscapes for electronic music. Some of the greatest pad sounds probably I've ever heard. And Animoog and TB Flow Tones, Sunriser, all these are great apps. But which ones I use the most so far is going to be the Synthmaster apps. And then for sure the uh, Bass 808 here. And then the final screen I have here is... Omega, Sunbox, and then Newcomer Octane, which I've actually been using a lot too because it's got some really great modern sounds in there. 
All right, so let's move on now to the instruments and guitar amps. So here again, we have some of these great apps that aren't AUV3 yet, such as a sample tank, but I do have a couple of replacements for those. And one of those is going to be the BS16i. Between this and Pure Synth, I pretty much have all the sounds I need that Sample Tank has. And probably my favorite piano is going to be the Ravencroft here 275, although it's kind of a tie between the Ravencroft and the Pure Piano. And then if you're doing any type of gospel music, of course you got to have MK Sensation, just a must. All of the gospel musician apps, just absolutely fantastic keyboards in there. I've just never seen anybody rival the electronic piano sounds and really any of the gospel musician apps. They haven't seen anybody do anything better yet. And then of course you got to have Geo Shred for those heavenly guitar solos. And we do have a couple of different guitar amps on here because they all have their own sound. So we have Tone Stack Pro, which is great. 20th Anniversary, which is great. I'm not sure why I have Amp Kit and Amplitude here still. Probably because I invested in their sounds, but they don't have AUV3, so I just don't use them. Maybe I'm just holding out hope that they'll go AUV3 one day. But until then, we have cool apps like Overloud, Rhino, and Mammoth. And then, of course, all of the amazing Nimbrini audio amps. And then finally, I have a couple of the Swam instruments. And I haven't invested too heavily in these. As you can see, I only have two of them. But that's because I invested pretty heavily in the iSymphonic ecosystem. So I have pretty much every single one of their expansions in there. Which, of course, if I, I could do it over again, I would just reinvest everything into these Swam instruments. All right. So let's move on to generative apps, which is mostly a new category here that uses artificial intelligence to create a lot of these different things here. And we did videos on a lot of these apps like Beatly Pro and SongGen. You can definitely search the channel for those. But you can see we have the Audio Modern apps here as well. And then Piano Motifs, absolutely great piano melody generator. And then Riffler, can't recommend this enough for generating guitar riffs. All right, so let's move on here to the big folder of plugins. You can see we have a bunch of the Audio Damage apps here. Of course, the Brambos apps and the FAC apps here as well. Some more Nimbrini apps. Absolutely have to have some of the Eventide plugins here. And if you're doing any type of mixing, you've got to have some of the Fab Filter apps here. Really great stuff. And then we have some more Bleas apps here and Flux Mini. And look out for Flux Mini Pro 2 coming. Super looking forward to that app because it's going to kind of be the shaper box of iOS. And if you haven't yet, definitely download these free plugins from Baby Audio. Really, really great sounding. But yeah, as far as which ones I use the most, let's take a look here. So I definitely use Perforator a lot on my melodies, which is pretty much a gating app. And then I love the chorus and reverb here from FAC. And then the next screen, let's see here. I definitely use the QVox a lot. Put that in a lot of my guitars. And you cannot go wrong with the Black Hole Reverb, one of the best reverbs on iOS. I certainly use all the Fab Filter apps on pretty much all of my final mixes inside of Cubasis. Definitely use the Slow Mo FX on a bunch of melodies. It's kind of like the halftime of iOS. Or actually, that's the Four Pockets version. But then the Blease version is called Blease Slow Machine, and that's the one I typically use the most to achieve that type of halftime effect. All right, and that is it for all my effects. Let's go to the multi effects. Now, I think by far my favorite one here is going to be Ephedrix. You can just get some crazy results really, really fast. And I love the user interface where you pretty much just draw the lines. It's kind of like a sequencer where you pretty much just draw in your effects here. Just a great app for customizing melodies and all sorts of stuff. But yeah, I think that's the main one I use. Probably that and Looperator. Qual Effects is great for multi-effects using multiple effects at the same time. You can see their user interface is just fantastic for that. You can just simply use your fingers to tap on multiple ones at the same time. And it ends up working really, really well. So let's close that. I usually use that in AUV3 format. But if you are doing any type of mixing, you definitely want to have Mixbox as well. A lot of great legendary emulations in there. So I think the ones I use the most here is probably going to be Ephedrix and Mixbox. Let's move on to the next one here. Going to be Distortion and Tape, one of my favorite folders in here. Now, I've definitely used these all the time, but in various different ways. So I kind of interchange these. So it's going to be kind of hard to see which ones I use the most here. But definitely Low Fly Dirt and definitely RX950. Oh, and then the Beef app for sure. Fantastic on bass and drums. It's basically the sausage fattener of iOS. So let's see on this screen, definitely Low Fly Dirt, RX950, Saturn 2, and Beef. And Ble Bleach Saturator I use every once in a while as well. Let's go to the second screen here. Oh man, Chow Tape Model. I've been using this a little bit as well lately. You can kind of almost just build your own tape machine modulation within this app. And then the Real Bus here by Tone Boosters. I actually mostly use this on the Master Track using their Master Tape presets. But that is the apps I think I use most in this category. All right, moving on to the audio utilities. Now here I use TB Morphit on pretty much every single track. And that's to make sure to get your EQ curve as flat as possible in your headphones so that what you're hearing sounds the most consistent across the most type of listening platforms. And I definitely use the Analyzer FX every once in a while to find a key of a sound I need. The Attack Softener is a great utility and does just exactly what it does, exactly what it advertises there. Of course, the Transcribe Plus and Let's Unmix, just fantastic apps that use AI to separate a song back into its mix. So you can like turn down the drums or turn down just the vocals. And you can do that all in real time, which is pretty cool. We have a video on that. Make sure you check that out. But all right, let's move on to the next folder. It's going to be MIDI plugins. Definitely use these a few. 
Now, what I use the most in this one by far, though, is going to be the Rosetta Tools, because within this app here is like seven different apps. But the one I use the most within there is going to be the Scalar app, and that allows you to stay within the same scale that you set, no matter which keys that you play on the keyboard. So essentially, you can't play any wrong keys. And then the other app I use all the time inside of Rosetta is going to be their Arpeggiator. There are other apps to do that, like Step Polyarp, for example, and Arpeggiist, but it's just so handy to use the same tools over and over again because you get familiar with them. And again, they're all within this single app suite here called Rosetta. And then if you're working in a Dollis type of situation like AUM or Audiobus or something like that, you can always throw on Atom or Atom 2, which are some fantastic AUV3 MIDI sequencer apps. And I used to use Octocron a lot more, but that actually got real buggy. But yeah, I think that's what I use the most in here is probably just Rosetta the most. I find myself using all these other ones every once in a while, but Rosetta definitely by far the most. All right, let's go on to the next app here, or the next folder. Looks like we've got through the first couple of rows here. Now we're moving on to the third and final row, which is vocals. Now, one of the really great tricks that I learned here is to actually throw one of these apps that were originally meant to be thrown on human vocals and instead throw them on various instruments because you can really get a completely different tone and a very unique sound when you start doing that. But as far as the apps that I use the most here, it's probably going to be MicSwap Pro probably just because I'm most familiar with it because I've used it the most. But again, all these apps are fantastic, including Voice Synth, Voice Rack FX, and Micrum. But yeah, I find myself using MicSwap Pro the most. Moving on now to compressors and limiters. Of course, you have the industry standard here, compressors and limiters from FabFilter. There's also this really great app called BarkFilter, which has a preset called Triple Band, and that can actually act as a great mastering plugin as well. And the FAC apps here, Maxima and Transient, and you can't go wrong with any of the DDMF apps, including their New York Compressor and Magic Death Eye. Can't recommend those enough for drums and bass. And then I used to use Pump House a lot, which is basically a sidechain effect, before Cubasis started implementing their own native sidechain effect. And in fact, I have a couple other apps like that as well, like Bleece Sidekick and Sidechain FX from Four Pockets. Again, don't really use these anymore because Cubasis has created its own native sidechain feature. So let's see which apps do I use the most here now. Definitely the Pro L2. Maxima and Transient on drums and bass. And I also love the Schlap app as well. Really handy for just throwing on a drum loop. And I certainly use the Magic Death Eye a lot on bass and drums. I definitely use the New York Compressor every once in a while as well. So yeah, the ones I use the most is going to be the L2, Maxima, Transient, and probably the New York Compressor and Magic Death Eye. So let's go on to the EQs. Again, Red Rock Sounds making some of my favorite 80s emulations here. Can't go wrong with any of these EQs. They're all beautiful. And of course, the Pro Q3, got to use that pretty much in every track. I used to use Go-To EQ a lot, but these days I just find myself using the Pro Q3 or the native EQ inside of Cubasis. But the 6144, oh man, that is a fantastic, fantastic EQ. Anything you put through that is going to sound better. That is pretty much it for the EQs. I use the Red Rock Sounds for different taste and different color. And then I use the Pro Q3 to actually chop frequencies. Next up is the Exciters. Now, these are definitely fun to throw on various instruments and synthesizers, but the ones I probably use the most is going to be Bandit from FAC and the RSS Bass Enhancer from Red Rock Sounds. But the Woot is really great because that's basically the OTT of iOS. So you can definitely use that in electronic music. So yeah, I guess I do end up using that. So pretty much Bandit and Woot and Bass Enhancer, that's the ones I use the most here. And then finally, we have our mastering plugins. Now, generally, I like to do most of my mastering inside of Cubasis, and I have various mastering chains for various different situations, but it's hard to go wrong with some of these here. For example, the Lursen app, it's just really, really great. It's hard to get a bad sound out of that. As long as you give your track enough headroom, once you put it through any one of these, it's going to sound a lot better. But as far as which one I'd recommend, probably Final Touch and Lursen the most. But they're all really, really great apps. But boy, that Lursen, that Lursen really, really sounds good. But then Final Touch gives you so much more control and has a ton of great presets. So I just love them both. But yeah, that was our app collection. How about you guys? Are you using some of the same apps? Are you using completely different apps? Let us know in the comments below. All right, and now it's time again for our final thoughts. And if you are still rocking with us, then we just can't thank you enough for being here, especially those folks that are here every single Wednesday and Friday to watch our live streams and our live premieres. Now, we do hope that going through all of these different apps was in some way useful to you. Because of course, if you are like us, then you are on that never ending journey to find that next great app. And just so you guys know, our collection of apps is always changing and shifting around. So this is just a snapshot of what we have right now. So if you do enjoy this video and want us to do another version of this next year, definitely let us know in the comments below. Now, if you guys are looking to expand your sounds outside of just buying a new app, then definitely make sure you check out the sounds in our brand new Classic Rock Sample Pack. We've definitely stuffed this thing plumb full of value. So besides having a ton of different sounds in there and 10 different drum kits, we also give you over 30 amp presets and support for over 22 apps. So definitely make sure to head over to our website now and check it out because it is 50% off currently until May 2nd. 
And finally, if you do want to keep up with everything that we are doing here at the channel, including releasing sample packs, giveaways, videos, mobile music production news, discounts, and more, then definitely make sure to check out our completely free newsletter at mobilemusicpro.com newsletter. And so, until next time, everybody, keep talking music, and we'll see you later. Hey everybody, Vortex here, and if you're not aware yet, we now have over 100 fully edited mobile music tutorial videos. And we make music every single Wednesday live on our channel right inside of Cubasis on our iPad. Plus, we also have a bunch of free sample packs, guides, and more at our website at mobilemusicpro.com free. And so if you are into that sort of thing, producing music on your iPhone or iPad, then definitely make sure to subscribe and check out the rest of the videos on the channel that we know you'll love.